Good morning. Good morning. Our call to worship is Psalm 100, verses 1 through 4. And if those of you who listen to the Salvation Army this morning, you will have heard it there as well. So you hear it all over again. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful song. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us, and we are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise, and give thanks to him and praise his name. Amen. Let us praise his name by standing as you are able and singing. Number 797, Come Ye Faithful People, Come. Please be seated. A welcome to each and every one of you on this another glorious day that the Lord has given us to come here and worship Him. I trust you have been enjoying the colorful leaves out there. They're looking absolutely wonderful this year. All we need is a little sunshine on them, make them even that much better. In the way of announcements, there's a, a number of things I would like to go through. Um, first of all, I don't know if you know how the food bank works, but the local food bank, when we put some stuff in the basket downstairs, it's taken to the food bank and they weigh it. So everything is gone, done by weight. And last year, we at Frank Street Baptist Church continued eight, contributed 852 pounds to the food bank. That was from April 1st, 2017 to March 31st, 2018. So therefore, my challenge for you is to see if we can't get that up to 1,000 pounds this year by putting more stuff in that basket downstairs. They've given us a certificate, which I will hang up downstairs after the service. Report for the next congregational business meeting, please have into me by the 10th, so I can have it all ready to hand out next Sunday. 
Today is uh, the last day that we have Liv and Arlene with us for the summer, and uh, we wish you God's blessing as you go south and worship with your congregation down there. We uh, thoroughly enjoy having you here, and uh, it's a pleasure to spend time with you. This time I would like to invite Roberta up here for a moment. Good morning. So just a couple things. Um, I think Nancy had announced a couple of weeks ago that um, the Susies from Bolivia are coming to, to uh, visit us and they will be here on the 16th of October. So all of you are welcome to come to my house and we are going to have a potluck. I'm not sure if we're going to have a barbecue. The barbecue is there, but I don't barbecue. so. If you know how to barbecue, you can <laughs> set up the barbecue. Um, so bring your, um, bring your chairs, um, and hopefully it'll be nice. And if not, we'll eat indoors, and it'll probably start around 5 o'clock. And um, I think the Susies have a presentation for us following. Um, so every, I think there was over 20 of us um, the last time they were here, a couple years ago, so everybody seemed to really enjoy what they had to say, and we do sponsor them financially and prayerfully. Um, so don't forget October 16th. And um, there are some envelopes at the back, but you can put it also on your uh, weekly envelope if you want. Uh, we're doing a love offering uh, for them just because they, they were so kind in coming to, to visit us. Um, also, um, the mission committee is planning to do shoe boxes again this year, and um, I, I do have the shoe boxes here. They're in my car, so <laughs> but I will bring them. I, I will bring them here for next Sunday. But if you can kind of think of some of the things that you would like to put in the shoe box, there's also um, I think Paula Hetherington um, sometimes. Uh, she has suggested that you can already buy a shoe box, um, and these shoe boxes go to children um, all over the world, and they have a, a special special countries every year that um, these shoe boxes go to, and so they're given to the children, and then later, hopefully, they will. Um, learn about God through another program um, that is initiated by the, the shoe boxes. So it is a Christian um, um, outreach. And so if you're interested in doing that again this year, uh, I think I told you before that uh, I guess the schools are not allowed to, to do this um, anymore. Um, so they always supplied quite a few shoe boxes for the area and we're hoping that um, some of you will be interested in going down to Kitchener to actually fill some of the shoe boxes. If you don't think you can contribute a whole shoe box then perhaps maybe there's an item that you would like to donate and maybe we can make up our own shoe boxes. Okay, thanks, Nancy. So hopefully we'll see you on the 16th of October, if not before then. But don't forget my house at 5 o'clock. Thank you, Roberta. As you will notice in the responsive reading, um, there's a lot of um, thanksgiving and praise is repeated in there quite often. And uh, that is our theme for uh, our prayer of invocation this morning as well. And as usual, we will stop for a time of silent personal prayer. Shall we pray? Father, this morning we do enter your house with thanksgiving and praise in our hearts as we gather to worship you. On this Thanksgiving Sunday, we come as thankful people raising our songs to you thanking and praising you for each breath we take, for each beat of our heart, for us all through your love and grace showered on us day by day. 
Lord, at this harvest time of year, we give thanks for the farmers, for all those who work in the food industry that supply us with our daily bread. O Lord, indeed you have given us a beautiful earth to live in. You send the rain and the sunshine and the seasons in their time. At this time, each of us will pause and silently and personally give you thanks and praise. Father, we thank and praise you for listening to us, your children, praying. Prayer is a blessing we cherish as we commune with you both individually and jointly in community prayer. We thank and praise you for the Holy Spirit at work in our hearts. We thank and praise you for the talents given us when we accepted and made you Lord of our lives. We thank and praise you for the free gift of salvation we receive through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, sacrifice on the cross. We thank and praise you for giving us the Lord's Supper as we will once again be refreshed at your table. We thank and praise you for Pastor Shannon and the Bible-based messages we are given here week after week. We thank and praise you for loving us and making a home for us in heaven. Therefore, we praise and glorify you. We worship and adore you. We seek to bring glory to your most holy name through the songs we sing through our prayers that are offered up to you and through internalizing the message, Brussels sprouts and nor'easters. Send your calming peace into each of our hearts as you bless us through this service. And Father, as we leave here, keep us singing. He has made me glad as we thank and praise you for this is the day that you, Lord, have made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Through Jesus, our Savior's name we pray. Amen. For the beauty of the earth, number 793, we'll ask you to stand as you are able.
Please be seated. Responsive reading as per usual is on the back of the bulletins and up on the overhead. And I will lead you in the responsive reading at this time. God most high, before your son fed the multitudes, before he raised his friend Lazarus, And so, as we are blessed to do your works in the world, that indeed might know your glory. For the grace to feed the poor. For the grace to heal the sick. For the grace to lift up the broken. For the grace to harbor the refugee. For the grace to aid the endangered. For the grace to speak on behalf of the marginalized and vulnerable. For the grace to be the salt of the earth and the light of the world for the prisoner, the addict, the lost, at the outcast and the dying. Amen. This time I'll ask the ushers to take up your offering. Shall we pray? Dear Lord, as Joanne has just been playing, how great thou art, for thou art great indeed, and our souls sing of your glory. And Lord, we also thank you for how great you are looking after us. We thank you for the monies that we receive day after day, week after week, month after month. And Lord, we thank you for the opportunity of giving back to you. We ask, Lord, that you bless each and every person here. We ask that you bless us as we continue to seek to serve you in every way possible. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Children's hymn, number 214, He Has Made Me Glad. I expect to hear you singing out loud and clear, and I don't see any instruments out there. Hopefully a few of you do have one, and uh, we will make a joyful noise to the Lord as we sing number 200. And 14, and we ask you to stand as you are able.
seated. I will invite Pastor Shannon to come forward at this time. Well, I'm glad to be here too. Good morning, everyone. On this Sunday devoted to Thanksgiving, of course, Thanksgiving should be a uh, just our general attitude, but on this Thanksgiving Sunday, does anyone have some praises or some requests that they would like included this morning? Mary yes, Mary Wynn. He passed away this past week, and um, he leaves behind him a very young family, a pair of twins, they're about four, and uh, a grieving wife. So. Okay, thank you. And many patients. I think there's somewhat, you can call the thousands. So. Sure, thank you. Oh. Yes. Um, we are surrounded right at the moment. We have um, my sister's getting chemo. Um, Wife is, uh, my husband didn't six months, they had leukemia, and uh, my husband sent me to the church yesterday. Thank you. Yes, Shirley. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. That's right. Thank you. Yes, greatest. And how are the peanut butter how are the peanut butter sandwiches right now, greatest? <laughs> You're living I, on. I, I sent a pizza from my, from my uh, lunch. I bought, I bought pizza and, and an apple uh, pie. I made pictures as well with my lunch <laughs> and my dessert. <laughs> right. <laughs> yes. Yes, Mark. Thank you. Roberta. Um, I guess I'd like to pray for my husband and his crew. They've, um, they've sailed 1,700 and some nautical miles. Uh, he texted me today and said he hasn't showered since I last saw him. <laughs> maybe two weeks ago. I guess they're trying to save water. Um, they were doing nine knots. Uh, they were going pretty fast. He was telling me the other boat, the lady and her husband, who's sailing that boat by themselves, they, um, they were sleeping upstairs in the galley. They weren't going down, down to the berth. And I guess she fell off the bed with some violent motion. She, she didn't hurt herself. But he tells me today that things are a little calmer and he had his best sleep in two weeks last night. So 
they only have like 3,000 and some more miles to travel. So, yeah. All right, thank you. I cannot imagine. All right, let's, let's go to God in prayer. Dear God, we thank you for your amazing power and work in our lives. Thank you for your goodness and your blessings over us. Thank you for good sleep. Thank you that we are able to worship together freely, that we can meet at any time for Bible studies and things to, that we do to learn about you and to extend your love to others. Lord, thank you for the safe travel and thank you that Gratis and Roberta have returned. Lord, thank you that you have brought us safely to this day. Lord, we thank you that you are able to bring hope even through our toughest times. And Father, we, we pray that those surrounding um, Mary Wynn's late neurologist, that their family, and their children, and his clients would be comforted. And Lord, we ask for your strengthening and your compassion upon Arlene's sister, her nephew's wife, and their neighbor. Lord, on Joel, on Ruth, on Emily, on Myrtle. Lord, we ask that you would heal them in mind, in body, and in spirit according to your most perfect will. And Lord, we also ask for blessings upon Annika as she is away from us. Lord, bring her back to us safely. Lord, strengthen us for your purposes. Thank you for your great love and care. Thank you for your mercy and grace that we know through our Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you that you are always with us and will never, never leave us. Thank you for your incredible sacrifice so that we might have freedom and life. Forgive us when we don't thank you enough for who you are, for all that you do, and for all that you have given. Help us to set our eyes and hearts on you afresh. Renew our spirits. Fill us with your peace and joy. We love you, Lord, and we need you this day and every day. We give you praise and thanks, for you alone are worthy. In the precious name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Thank you. Before I read the scripture this morning, I wanted to set the scene. And hopefully this map will help. This is an account written by the inspiration of God by Luke, who was a doctor accompanying Paul that details the advance of Christianity from Jerusalem to Rome. 
Paul was Jewish, born a Roman citizen, and educated as a Pharisee. As a result, his strict observance to the traditional and written law motivated him to be a determined persecutor of those who believed in Jesus as the Messiah. After his dramatic conversion experience, Paul served as a teacher and preacher to the Gentiles, to people like you and I. He made three missionary trips around the Mediterranean in obedience to God's call, to God's call on his life. However, he met with such strong opposition from the chief priests and elders of the Jewish people that when Paul returned to Jerusalem, they accused him of defiling the temple by taking Greeks into their holy place. And you can read that in the chapters preceding Acts 27 that we're going to focus on today. Um, they stirred up the crowd to the point where they beat him. And that only stopped when the commander of the Roman troops arrested him and put him in jail. Paul was put on trial before the governor, Festus, and visiting King Agrippa. And during his trial, Paul demanded his right as a Roman citizen to be tried by Caesar. So that's why he had to take this trip that we're reading about today. Festus agreed and sent Paul to Rome to stand trial. So the group of soldiers and prisoners, including Paul, were under the command of a Roman centurion named Julius. They set sail from Caesarea and made a couple of stops before they landed at Myra in Lycia. Here they boarded a second ship, an Alexandrian ship, carrying wheat to Rome. So beginning in the sixth verse of this chapter, Acts 27, the details of the voyage start to emerge. They were sailing well into the dangerous end of the sailing season. And um, those of you who know something about sailing, um, they, were, they were in the very tail end and even in, um, maybe shouldn't have even been out, but there they were at the end of the sailing season. And very soon the ship and 276 people on board were all caught up in a great storm, much like a very large hurricane blowing out of the northeast. They fought the so storm, but soon gave up all hope of rescue, and the ship was driven across the Mediterranean Sea. Fourteen days later, still being driven across the Great Sea, the sailors sensed that they were approaching land. Let us hear the word of God. Fearing that they would be dashed against the rocks, they dropped four anchors from the stern and prayed for daylight. In an attempt to escape from the ship, the sailors let the lifeboat down into the sea, pretending they were going to lower some anchors from the bow. Then Paul said to the centurion and the soldiers, unless these men stay with the ship, you cannot be saved. So the soldiers cut the ropes that held the lifeboat and let it drift away. Just before dawn, Paul urged them all to eat. For the last 14 days, he said, you have been in constant suspense and have gone without food. You haven't eaten anything. Now I urge you to take some food. You need it to survive. Not one of you will lose a single hair from his head. After he said this, he took some bread and gave thanks to God in front of them all. Then he broke it and began to eat. They were all encouraged and ate some food themselves. Altogether, there were 276 of us on board. When they had eaten as much as they wanted, they lightened the ship by throwing the grain into the sea. Thanks be to God for his word to us today. Amen. Well, 
Well, happy Thanksgiving, everyone. I know I didn't have a chance to go around this morning and greet you before the service, but um, I wish you happy Thanksgiving. I'm so glad that our country continues to set aside a time for Thanksgiving because we need to be thankful. We are commanded to be thankful. And we ought to be thankful, for we have lots and lots and lots to be grateful for. And for us here this morning, this Thanksgiving Sunday falls on Communion Sunday, a day when we remember how Jesus, as the divine Son of God, gave everything he had for our sins a day when we celebrate the power of God who raised Christ from the dead. Today is a day when we praise our Lord for the peace we know through faith in our Redeemer, Jesus Christ. So yes, we have much to be thankful for. Scripture teaches us to give thanks in prayer to give thanks always for all things and in everything to give thanks. God gives us those reminders in his word to be thankful. So we are supposed to be thankful. We are commanded to be thankful. For God alone is worthy of our praise, our gratefulness, our adoration, and our reverence. Worthy are you, our Lord and our God, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things, and because of your will they existed and were created. And even though we sometimes forget, it is easy to be thankful for the good things. For those people and experiences and things that fill us with love and joy and peace and contentment. So you're probably wondering, (laughs) why on earth would I mention Brussels sprouts and nor'easters on this Thanksgiving Communion Sunday? Why would we ever consider being thankful for such a bitter, smelly vegetable like Brussels sprouts? and a stormy weather event like nor'easters that can cause such devastation. But that is exactly why I mention that nasty food, sorry, and that stormy weather. We need to be thankful in everything, the good, the bad, and the ugly. As I thought about having a Thanksgiving meal myself, I asked myself, what is the vegetable that I detest the most? And I'm afraid it's those mini cabbages that came to my mind right away. And a quick survey online confirms that I'm not alone in my aversion to this vegetable. Perhaps some of you disagree with me, and you love Brussels sprouts. <laughs> I see Bob nodding back there. Well, Bob's the exception to the rule. <laughs> Good for you, Bob. <laughs> oh, and I uh, and Joanne too. Oh, and we. Oh, all right then. <laughs> you love Brussels sprouts. Good for you. But perhaps some of you share my distaste for this this sulfurous food. (laughs) Yet, knowing that everything created by God is good, I thought I would try really hard to find reasons to appreciate Brussels sprouts to be thankful for them. And it turns out it blew my mind. 
it turns out that they are loaded with vitamin A, potassium, calcium, fiber, and that a quarter of a cup of these little guys <laughs> contains four times more vitamin C than an orange. And they contain protein. Added to that is the interesting fact that Brussels sprouts are a cruciferous vegetable. Can you see the root word there, cruci uh, crucifer? In the botanical word, crucifer defines a plant with four petals arranged like a cross. And as you see in the second definition, it denotes a person carrying a cross or crucifix in a procession. Isn't that amazing? I had no idea. Brussels sprouts are not only good for our physical bodies, they were even named in such a way as to point to us and to honor God's sacrificial love for us, the sign of the cross in nature which takes us to the matter of the nor'easter and our scripture reading. There they were, all 276 people, a centurion, soldiers, sailors, and prisoners being beaten and battered by what scripture describes in the 14th verse of this same chapter, as a wind of hurricane force, force called the Northeaster. We have a hulking ship loaded down with grain headed to Rome past the end of the safe shipping season that for two weeks has been undergoing what Luke describes as such a violent battering from the storm that they began to throw the cargo overboard. On the third day, they threw the ship's tackle overboard, that's in verses 18 and 19, and tried to lash ropes around the boat in order to hold it together. Scripture says that on the 14th night, they dropped four anchors and they prayed for daylight. And you can appreciate the seriousness, even myself not having any sailing experience, I can appreciate the seriousness of their situation. Luke admits that they gave up hope, that they had not seen sun or stars for many days as the storm raged on. Luke writes, in an attempt to escape from the ship, the sailors let the lifeboat down into the sea. You can imagine Paul shouting to the centurion and the soldiers over the wind and the creaking ship. Unless these men stay with the ship, you cannot be saved. For in faith and courage of conviction, he was able to convince them to cut the ropes that held the lifeboat and let it drift away. He shared how an angel of God had assured him that all would survive if they stayed with the ship. Paul told them, not one of you will lose a single hair from his head. See what Paul did in the midst of this roaring storm just before dawn, the time that these men had prayed for so that they could see what was happening. Just before dawn, Paul urged them all to eat. For the last 14 days, he said, you have been in constant suspense and have gone without food. You haven't eaten anything. Now I urge you to take some food. You need it to survive. Not one of you will lose a single hair from his head. After he said this, he took some bread and gave thanks 
to God in front of them all. Then he broke it and began to eat. They were all encouraged and ate some food together. In the midst of the storm, they're probably wet. They probably haven't had a shower for 14 days. The boards on the ship are creaking. They're rocking back and forth. In the midst of that storm, Paul used his gifts from God to calm, to lead, to instruct, and to give thanks to God. In front of them all, Scripture is careful to say, Luke has been led to make sure that he said, Paul gave thanks to... In, Thanks to God in front of them all, in the middle of the storm, amidst the noise and the mayhem and the terror and the smells and the, the wetness. He gave thanks to God in front of them all. He didn't give thanks by himself, separately behind whatever, so no one could see him. He gave thanks to God in front of them all. His faithfulness, his courage of conviction, and his obedience fed these men physically and in spirit. In the midst of the churning waters, the rocking boat straining under the storm, accosting it, and the pervasive smell of fear that I think it's safe to say existed, that characterized the hold, Paul gave thanks to God. And there are two final details that I want to draw your attention to before we take some bread and give thanks ourselves to God at the Lord's table. The Bible records, altogether there were 276 of us on board. Every soul is accounted for. You are accounted for. You and I are accounted for. 276 souls were accounted for. And we do not know the destination of these men, yet God records them. As Paul would later write, God our Savior wants all people to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth. The truth is that Jesus Christ is the only mediator between man and God. And if you repent of your sins and you declare with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that he was raised from the dead, you will be saved. Every soul, your soul and my soul, are accounted for whether we stay with the ship and are saved or whether we are not. And finally, our last verse reads, when they had eaten as much as they wanted, they lightened the ship by throwing the grain into the sea. There is not a detail overlooked. And the fact that that is included means it's important. And in my little mind, that took me back to the Old Testament, where God specified that if a sacrifice was offered as an expression of thankfulness, then along with the thank offering, there were to, there were to be offered thick loaves without yeast and with olive oil mixed in, thin loaves made without yeast and brushed with oil, and thick loaves of the finest flour, well kneaded and with oil mixed in. Along with their fellowship offering of thanksgiving, they are to present an offering with thick loaves of bread made with yeast. They are to bring one of each kind as an offering, a contribution to the Lord. 
an offering of bread was included in a thank offering. So to my mind, throwing grain into the sea looks like a thank offering. May you and I find the courage, be granted the strength of conviction, be found faithful and grow in wisdom because we stay with the ship and are thankful to God in the midst of our storms. For there is always, there is always, there is always something to be thankful for, even when it's Brussels sprouts and nor'easters. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for Brussels sprouts and nor'easters, for in them we see how you nourish and heal us. We see the power of your hand. May we always be able to give thanks to you in the midst of the storms we experience, so that we may grow to depend upon you, Lord, and glorify your holy name. In the name of our Redeemer, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. As we prepare to come to the table, let us sing hymn 796 in thanksgiving. Let us praise him. Please stand. Father God, you call us to the sacred table so that we might remember the sacrifice Jesus made for each one of us. We confess our shortcomings and take comfort in the words from Psalm 103, which read, The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in love and kindness. 
He has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his loving kindness towards those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. Let us pray together. Heavenly Father, we are in constant need of your mercy and help. We come to your table in praise and thanksgiving for the bread and the cup that is before us, for they are a witness and a sign of the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit. We cannot thank you enough, dear Lord. In the name of our Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. We invite all who love the Lord Jesus Christ, who have repented of their sins, and who have decided to follow Christ in newness of life to come to this table. Draw near with reverence, faith, and thanksgiving, and take the supper of the Lord to your comfort. Come in obedience to our Lord's command to share his table to its blessing and fellowship to all disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. Come. Let us pray. O oh God, we thank you that Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. We give you praise for the love and mercy you have shown us. We give you thanks for this bread and this cup, a timeless reminder of the flesh and blood life of Jesus given for our salvation. In Christ we see a life that could not be ended by death, a purpose that could not be silenced by the forces of violence, and a love immeasurable, deep, and transforming. As we eat the bread and drink the wine, we thank you for the acceptance and tenderness with which you have transformed our shame into dignity and loved us into life. We thank you for cherishing the potential in us and calling us to be partners in your vision of this world. We call on your spirit to come alongside us so that together in the company of your spirit, we may give ourselves afresh to the task of remembering you, of being the body of Christ, of living your life in this world. Amen. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it. And said, this is my body that is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us also give thanks for the bread. Let's bow our head. Lord Jesus, on this Thanksgiving Day, we have to be a lot of be thankful for. Not only for all the blessings we have received through this year, but also your body that you give to us. That is the biggest sacrifice anybody ever can do. We cannot imagine how much you have to endure just for our sins. We thank you for you that you may be with us wherever we go. And thank you for doing this. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
Let us eat this bread in remembrance of Christ's sacrifice for us, and let us be thankful. In the same way, he took the cup after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let us also give thanks for the cup. Father, we come in our unworthiness to you at this supper. Without the body of Christ's blood being shed for us, Lord, we would not have access to your presence. So we give you praise and thanks for the preparations you have made for us with the broken body and the shed blood of Jesus so that we can have salvation in his name. Amen. Jesus, our Redeemer, the one who suffered, said, This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Drink this in remembrance that Christ died for us, and let us be thankful. Let us pray. We have taken bread and the cup into our bodies. Now may our hands be the hands of Christ in the world. May they do no violence. May our eyes see those who are overlooked. May our ears listen to those who are unheard. May our voices be raised for the voiceless. Let not our songs of praise be empty. May our feet take us where Christ leads, and may our hearts and minds be open to the Spirit of God. 
Christ has remembered us. May we remember Christ all our days. Amen. Let us sing together our final hymn. Please stand. the joys you experience. Let thanksgiving transcend the pains you may suffer. Let thanksgiving sweeten the duties you must perform. Let thanksgiving underpin even the griefs you may have to bear. Oh, give thanks to our God who is so good, whose love stands firm forever. The love of the Redeemer, the love of the Creator, the fellowship of the Counselor be with you now and always. Amen. <laughs>